Thank you, Nicholas, um, for the inspiring talk. I'm Skylar Tibbetts. I'm faculty in the Department of Architecture. <clears throat> and I'm going to introduce the um, programmable session. So as we just heard, Nicholas, um, it, Nicholas predicted that in 1995, the world would be digital. And that obviously has come true. And he predicted many things that have, um, have come from that. But I would argue the world has become more and more material. And, and I'm going to try to show you what I mean by that. So this is the first CAD tool, Sutherland Sketchpad, invented here uh, at MIT that has its contemporary counterparts in sophisticated software and simulation that have radically changed nearly every discipline, whether that's design, mathematics, computer science, biology, earth and planetary science. Software and digital technologies have radically changed the way we think. They radically changed the way we design, what we can imagine, what we can optimize, evaluate, and ultimately what we can build. This is the first CNC machine, also invented here at MIT at roughly the same time, the first time a computer was connected to a milling machine. And that obviously has its contemporary counterparts in digital fabrication. If you look at just one of those sectors, if you look at 3D printing, there's nearly every day new types of printing from FDM to SLA to SLS. And more and more, they're actually bringing us closer to materials. You can look at Near East glass printing or electrospinning clothing or wood printing or carbon fiber and fiberglass printing. These digital technologies are not taking us further from reality. They're creating a renewed interest in physical material properties. And we can see this at a number of different scales. We can look at the smallest of scales, perhaps the at-home DIY maker communities, a growing community of people that are enabled by digital technologies, whether that's 3D printers or digital fabrication or uh, AR, VR, or Arduinos, or, or you name it, new capabilities that are creating an interest in questioning how we make things, questioning material properties, inventing new uh, processes to make. And we'll see some of that from Nadia in a bit. You can look at the other sector, the industrial fabrication and manufacturing sector. And, and obviously, digital technologies have enabled us to make things in new ways. They've enabled us to radically rethink material performance and physical, physical properties. But maybe most interesting is the research sector. You can look at synthetic biology, material science, bioprinting, organ printing. And I think all of these are pointing to the fact that there's truly a materials revolution happening enabled by the digital revolution. And it's not that these are just um, arguing for the separation of digital and physical technologies and now they're coming back together or we can easily talk between digital and physical. It's literally that the physical is becoming digital. Physical and digital are blending. So what I mean by that is literally we can now program materials to sense, actuate, and have logic. In this case, the material sensing light and temperature. It can sense moisture. Um, it can sense all sorts of triggers to become an actuator, to fold, curl, stretch, shrink, uh, squirm, swim. You can literally embed codes in physical materials to transform into the letters MIT or sophisticated and complicated geometries. We can embed programs. So those materials are sensing their environment, responding, and then enacting that program into physical form. We can also embed instructions for materials to assemble themselves. So these can go from arbitrary structures into furniture. We can go beyond assembly into lifelike properties. So they can assemble, they can grow, they can encapsulate, they can divide, they can grow and divide, grow and divide. Like cellular mitosis, we can show replication not just in robotic mechanisms, not just in biological materials, but we can show replication in physical, dumb, simple materials that are shaking on a table in a lab. I think all of these demonstrate that physical materials are not just uh, responding to digital properties. They're not just something that we make through digital fabrication, but that they have digital properties embedded in them. And we can now program them just like we did computers and machines. And yesterday, we programmed computers and machines, but I believe today we're programming matter itself. So that's exactly what this uh, panel is about. This panel is, is called Programmable because we're really rethinking programmable from software and how we uh, are interfacing the programmable technologies to digital fabrication, to embedding programs literally in materials and thinking about the context across different disciplines. So we have an amazing uh, lineup of speakers in this session, and I'll introduce them briefly. 
The first is Ben Fry and, and Casey Reese. Casey is a professor at UCLA and a computational artist who co-developed processing with Ben Fry while they were at the Media Lab. Processing is an open source programming language and a sketchbook, sketchbook for the visual arts. Ben Fry is the principal of Fathom here in Boston and best known for his work in data visualization and information design. Next, we'll have Manu Prakash. Manu is an assistant professor of bioengineering at Stanford. Manu is a scientist and physicist working at the intersection of physical biology and computing. And he's best known for his work on bubble logic, water computing, and the foldoscope, a dollar microscope that can be folded from paper. Benjamin Bratton is a professor of visual arts and the director of the Center of Design and Geopolitics at UC San Diego. Benjamin's an architect and design theorist best known for his theories on global computation and algorithmic governance. And Nadia Peek is a postdoctoral researcher at MIT Center for Bits and Atoms. And Nadia is best known for her work on machines that make machines and object-oriented hardware. Uh, last but not least, our moderator for this session is Kevin Slavin. Kevin's an assistant professor of media arts and sciences and the head of the Playful Systems Group at the MIT Media Lab. And with that, I'll hand it over to Kevin. Thanks so much.